so as first step what we are going to do is see how we can get the locations listing in place right from the model creation to everything so i've created a model called location i decided to rename it from places to location that made sense so if you can see i have changed the places to locations okay that is one change and then i created the model for location which is here in the model i have only two fillable fields which are name and short address then i have a factory i created the factory where we have the definitions for it so name is faker name and short address is faker address these are important for writing the tests so the factory is there and then i have location controller inside location controller the code is quite simple i know that this data point is not going to be a huge list so what i have done is i have simply queried the database order by the name of the location ascending and then a get no pagination nothing okay once i have this i'm returning an inertia render response where the name of uh, name of the page which is locations is passed on with a variable called locations where i'm sending this information so what happens is as far as the inertia response and uh, request response flow goes when I'm saying that inertia needs to render this locations, it basically means inside my resources folder, let's go inside that, inside JS, inside pages, I should have a locations.psx. And that is going to be the file which is going to be used to render whatever the page is. And while rendering, this variable will be available to this component. So let's go inside this component and see what we have done. So this is a functional component. And as I told you, because we were sending locations as a variable, that variable is now available as a prop to this functional component. And that's why I have done react.fc props. And this interface is an array of locations. I'm going to add the interface later on. But right now I went with an any so that I don't face any problems the rest of the things are quite straightforward i am using the template then i am creating this layout bag with the background okay then i have a divider so if you see over here in this page i have this location with a beautiful little divider so i added that ant design component and then i'm rendering my locations so if my location length is greater than zero which means i have at least a few locations to render or at least one location to render i go inside the map function i am using the list component from ant design and i'm sending the information as is so list item i have a key in here location id and then inside item meta i'm sending the title which is our location name and the description which is location dot short address with this in place i'm able to render this list nothing too complicated and then i wrote a few tests or rather only one test not few because i wanted to ensure that this page is able to get the three locations which i am passing through inertia so before i made any any wrote any test i made this configuration change where i said that the database connection during the tests will be sqlite database is memory okay and as i told you there is only one test that i have written so if you go inside the test feature location listing test i have only one test i'm refreshing the database every time the tests are executing i'm creating a fact i am calling the factory to create four locations and then I am asserting that I get those four locations over here. Okay, this is the inertia's, um, I would say, helper functions, which are very much like Fluent API, where you can test what is happening. Right now, we don't have any services, so only an integration test is written, where I am confirming that the page, which is, you know, when I go to this location route which is locations the inertia is asserting that that page has locations as four 
so you can see if I run PHP artisan test all the tests are passing and this basic functionality is created hello everyone so in this video we are going to look at how we can create the add location form so that the listing which we have created can have more entries so what have we done to create this add location form we have three fields in here one is a drop down and even i have a back button which pretty much is an instant you know back to the listing page this is the power of inertia js right so how have we achieved this particular functionality in the add location we have some basic validations in place as well all these are client end okay and we do have front end validation as well sorry my bad we do have back end validations so let's look at the web.php first inside routes web.php i have added two routes one is a post route which is slash locations where i am actually calling the store function to create the location which was you know the information which is coming from the form and there is a get route which is the page where you know, the form is present you know, where the form needs to be presented to the end user so that he can use it right so this is the page but before we go into that what i have done additionally is i have installed two packages inside the composer.json you will see there's this titan co ziggy package this ziggy package allows me to get all the routes information as a javascript object okay the installation is quite simple you just install this package through composer and then inside resources views app.blade.php before loading the javascripts i have this directive inside my blade file which is at the rate routes what it does is a very simple thing if i right click go to the source code in here you'd see ziggy equals and then there is this you know object ziggy object where i have all the routes mentioned okay you will see how when we have used this but i have installed this now obviously just the composer package will not help you too much we need to also install the npm package which is the javascript equivalent and so what i have done is obviously where is my ziggy so we have dependencies we have ziggy.js and i have the types for it as well okay so the type definitions and the actual package is installed all right so we have the so we know that we have a package that got installed for the routing purpose and we have created two routes now let's look at the location controller and see what we have done so the first one which is locations slash add which is calling the add method it is as simple as it can get we are returning an inertia response we are saying inertia render and then locations add now we know that here locations add automatically means that inside the resources folder javascript pages folder we should have a locations add.txtsx file this is the typescript file the react component which is getting rendered when the request is coming to this particular controller method okay so let's go inside this file as well but before we analyze this entire component there's one more route which is the store function okay the store function here what does it do it is creating a location before that it is validating the request so I have three rules in here name is required short address is required type is required now obviously because type is a drop down i can actually have a rule in uh, in a validation as well but i have kept it simple for now because i know this is you know, going to be used by my friend and uh, those kind of mistakes will generally not happen so 
right now I'm just going through the functionality so that I can give him something quickly. Anyways, um, so yes, we know the routes, we know the controller. Now let's go back to the component which is getting rendered. So this component, which is a functional component, is location add. Okay, so you can see react.fc, that is the type definition I have added. It doesn't have any props. The first line is form from the form.use form nothing which is coming from ant design. If you see the form is coming from the ant design. This is you can refer as the entire form object is given to you. Okay. I've destructured it from form.use form, whatever is coming. Okay. I have some styling information as an object. I got this reference from the ant design, so I have kept it as is. I have two functions. One is location type change. This is primarily for the select field. We will come to that. And this function, which is on finish, is written to handle the form submit. So now let's look at the template first to understand what is going on and how does the page render. So we have add location over here. Fine. Inside here we have this divider divider orientation left and we have add location so that's fine we know that then we have a row inside that we have a column with span 24 that's fine then we are opening a form tag okay this is the form component this is coming from and design as i told you right this is the form component and inside the form component if you see i'm saying form equals form this means i am associating this form with this particular form object okay then there is some name there is label column label column primarily means you know how much space i want to give for my labels okay then the wrapper com uh, column is where another you know, form is actually visible initial values remember true autocomplete is off on finish is typical on submit on a react form okay on submit i'm calling the on finish function which is this we'll come to that then we have a form item again this is an ant design component so a form input field is always you know uh, i would say enclosed within a form item okay form item has a label it has a name it has rules as well so whatever are the validation rules you can pretty much um, mention over here so i'm all only saying that it is a required field for now okay now this name will automatically get binded to the form so the form object will have a key called name where this you know, the value of this input field will be available same goes with this input field for short address okay i have a max uh, length of 250 here which i haven't added here i wanted to show you the examples okay and then i have this third field which is a select field okay so this is select placeholder that's fine on change we have the on location type change so as i told you here is the function so this function is getting called when the select object values are changing on change we get the value and because we have the form object it gives me form dot set fields value it's a function and that i can pass the name of the field and the value of the field so i'm saying that on change whatever is the value should be initialized or should be assigned to the type field in my form so automatically the select gets the value which is which just got changed and then there's an allow clear property basically what happens is if let's say i select hospital and then if i want to clear it i can do that okay up to you personal preference i have hard coded this to variable uh, to options I know these are the only two options which are going to come so for now this is fine okay and then we have form items some layouting stuff i have this button and then this is the inertia link why this because we wanted this back button which is an inertia link right if you don't do an inertia link and just pass a simple href it will do a page refresh but if you do an inertia link what you are ensuring is that the navigation is happening within inertia so the page doesn't preload it just does its magic and you get an SPN effect, SP effect okay so that's about it now let's look at the most important function which is the form submit 
the on finish. So on finish, what happens is we get the entire values field. If we console this, let me wait for the build to get completed. It is done. So now if I refresh, let's open up the console. So I have filled the form. Now if I hit save, I need to preserve log because the submission is still going to happen. If I save, okay, I am redirected to the locations page, which is fine. But if you see, this is the object which I got. Right, that that's what I had console, right? So it has a name, it has the short address, and it has the type. So what is happening over here? We are getting all the values. That values I'm taking and I'm passing to this function, which is inertia post. Inertia post is a function which comes with the inertia react package. It is allowing me to make a post call as if it's a post request from within the inertia component. The route, the URL is the route function, which is coming from Ziggy. If you see, now I'm using route from the Ziggy JS library and I'm passing the actual locations.save, which means whatever are the name of the routes which I have defined in my web.php, I can directly use it instead of hard coding the URL. That is the only reason I wanted Ziggy to be there. Okay, so I'm sending this as post request. Okay, the values which are coming. And then finally, I'm resetting the fields. Okay. So as you can see, oops, what happened? Yeah. So with this in place, we have already seen that the test is coming. If I create a new one as well, let me fill up the form. Okay, something like this. And if I hit save, it takes me here and I can see five locations are added. So that's how we are able to have a very simple form into working within Inertia.js using React.js, okay? Again, as you can see, this entire thing is a very snappy you know, SPA kind of an effect because of Inertia and the Ant design obviously helped me with this you know, form. It's looking quite nice. It has basic validations in place. So yeah. Generally, I, as I told you, right, I am feeling quite good about this design system and I really like working with it. So that's about it, guys, for this video. If you like this video and this series, do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.